All right, test, test, test. Here we go. This is Patrick Nix, the Western BCA Championships, eight ball championships in Lincoln City, Oregon. And we've got an elite Scotch doubles match coming up here. This is a fourth place match on the B side. Loser gets fourth. Winner gets, goes on to play against Joe Tamura and Kim Raymond, who are sitting in the third place match waiting for the winner of this. So uh, this is going to be Chad Bisconner and Jackson McDonald playing against Molina Ortiz and Bob Olson. Race to six, eight ball. We're waiting to get this thing kicked off. They're just Players are just getting set up with their equipment. And it's this is this is sure to be a good match. All right, all right, here we go. Action is about to begin. Again, this is Patrick Nix at the Western BCA Eight Ball Championships in Lincoln City, Oregon. You are watching us on the Evo Sports platform. We're here doing tables 17 and 18, having players use our player run live stream equipment right through the tablet, right from their table. Players will be starting and stopping the stream, keeping score and everything from the tablet. And um, I'll be here just to do a little commentary for you, and I believe we'll have some other commentary partners coming in soon. And this is Bob Olson racking up with the balls. Just finished a grueling match. Him and his partner, Melina Ortiz, uh, just defeated 
Eric Sawyer and Kerry Brower in a hill hill battle. So they're coming off fresh from a match, and I believe Chad and and um, Jackson have been waiting for a little while. And here we go. Off to the races. Nice little second ball break. Bunch of balls cruising towards that side pocket, but don't think anything went in. Uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't think so. I think this is a dry break. And... Okay. So dry break and Chad Bisconner at the table. Super tall guy. Guy's like 6'3". So he might be blocking our camera view for a little while. All right, we just had a little audio issue there for a second, but we're back on. Chad setting up his partner Jackson with the combo shot, looking to take on this three ball. And if this is successful, should open up the rack quite nicely. Or that was Jackson that shot that, setting up Chad. Good day, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Colin Cheel. How are you doing today? I'm all right. Great. Thanks for joining us here. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've got Colin Shield from Kick and Billiards coming in to help commentate out, out of uh, beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. I've got a little echo in my headset here. i got to figure that out. Okay. So, yeah, we've got uh, a great matchup here. This is a fourth place match in the Elite Scotch Doubles. And... Uh, some really good teams going on here. Molina Ortiz and Bob Olson versus Chad Bisconner and Jackson McDonald. The Elite Scotch Doubles is a Fargo capped at 1250. And I believe both of these teams are pretty close to that 
that cap. So these players are right around, they're all right around 600 to 650. Yeah, you always want to maximize that. There we go. Got rid of that echo in my headset. Sorry about that. Oh, no problem. Audio issues are always the most difficult. Oh, and he just hangs the seven ball. So that was that was Chad with the hanged ball. Not a hanging Chad, but uh, a hanged seven ball, we'll say. But that is going to give the opportunity here. Uh, it looks like you know, Molina and Bob have a bit of a cluster with stripes down there. What do you think about this, Colin? Are, are you much of an eight ball player on bar box? Do you like this game? <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, it's not my favorite game. Yeah. It, it definitely has attributes that uh, require skill for sure. Working right. in clusters, pattern play. It does. Yes, it does. I You've got to be very. For the seven foot table, it's, it's just. Not my favorite. Yeah, you've got to be very creative. It's a very different game from rotation on a big table to bar box eight ball. It's completely different style of play, different stroke. Um, but all of these players, uh, very familiar with the players we're watching, very familiar with this game. Uh, Molina Ortiz at the table right now is a very accomplished player. She's won many events here locally in the NWPA, the Northwest Women's Pool Association. I uh, thought I recognized her name. Yep. Uh, she's out of Oregon. Probably the highest rated female player that uh, the region has, according to Fargo Rate. I believe she comes in around a 633. Yeah, that's a level of skill. Yeah, they're making yeah, quick work of this rack. I think one of the things that the seven foot brings in is, is tighter cue ball. There's so much congestion. On a nine foot, you've got a lot more room to move around. Agreed. 100%. I, I was going to say to uh, roll forward here and get that 10 ball out of the way moving over to that side brings the cue ball forward to the 11 off and fairly easily as long as she doesn't hit the ball full and move up towards the eight she should be fine but i think the angle is a little bit uh, steep for that she should be okay yeah looking like that is going to come off the six ball here so you have to prepare for this That cue ball could get stuck behind the eight if you're not careful. And I think it did. You know, you, you have you have to okay. You do? Okay. Yeah, I mean, you just have to play that. You know it's coming off the six, so you might want to hit it a little firmer just to get either past the eight. Uh, because, yeah, I, I think he might be in a bit of a pickle here. I don't know if he's got the, uh, I don't know if he's got the line to get on this, to get that to the pocket, but it's, it's a possibility. And uh, now I know, Colin, this, this is your first time commentating on the, the new Evo sports platform. I think you've commentated on the older version before. Yes, uh, yes But I have. Um, there is a drawing tool available to you. Uh, so if you right-click on your mouse, you can get a straight line view. If you use the left-click on the mouse, you can use sort of a freestyle drawing tool. Um, so you can go ahead and try that out if you feel like it. Sure, sure I will. Oh, so uh, ball in hand here. What, I, I'm not sure what happened there. I think I, he, he just rubbed the eight going by. Oh, just oh, I didn't see that. All. Okay, I did not see the rub on the eight. Uh, so at any rate. Watching, as I should have been, but I... I it seemed to me that uh, the eight ball moved just a little bit, but I suppose you could watch that on YouTube. Or is this uh, all real time or very little delay? That's very little delay. Yeah, you're watching it at almost real time. 
I'm looking over the table right now, and he just got down on his shot. Yeah, so it's it's very real time. Yeah, I don't think the ball in hand really changed a whole lot. Honestly, it wouldn't wouldn't have mattered too much. I'm just missing that ball was. It made it a little easier being able to take that one right away. Not yeah. that it was a big deal. It's just, you know, you don't have to be too, well, honestly, anywhere at this end of the table would have been fine with one of the side. Yep, you're right. And now the only part here is that, uh, that tricky little situation where you've got a ball deep in the pocket trying to roll the cue ball properly. Sometimes you can misjudge it a little bit and come off a horn funny. A lot of people will tend to just draw straight off the ball and get the rail. Oh, overtook it a little bit. Yeah, I got a bit out of position. It's you know always tough to have the uh, the ball that's kind of deep inside the pocket to be your key ball for the eight. You know, it's because it's just kind of a, a little bit tough. Tougher to get position on on a ball when it's when the ball you're shooting is deep inside the jaws like that one was. I think part of that is the fact that your distances to your rail after that ball are so short. It's really hard to picture that hand line and get a good a good plan to to exactly where that's going to hit. Cutting it to the side, you ball can go for a ride. Miscue. Oh, a miscue. He does get to the rail, though, so it doesn't give up ball in hand, but not happy with himself there. So, really kind of a rough first rack for both teams here. We've seen a couple of errors by both teams, and uh, but I think that was the final error, I'm going to guess, of this rack. Anyway. You draw the side rail and back up and go around two rails. I like I like yeah I like spinning two rails for that. Now he should be able to just draw off of that towards that left center pocket. It looks like the angles okay to do that. Sometimes the camera angle can mess you up a little bit. One yeah. Second. I'll bring it back. Colin, I think we're getting your audio in a little choppy, and I'm, we're not really sure. Justin's going to text you here to maybe help out a little bit, but not sure what's what's happening specifically with that. But we'll try to get the, we'll try to get you back on with it uh, smoothed out a little bit. Okay. Bear with us. Do I sound okay to you? Yeah, I, I hear you fine. Nice okay. Clear. Okay. All right, so one nothing. Ortiz and Olsen go up. And, um, yeah, great team. Uh, Bob Olsen is a longtime player out of the WBCA, and Melina Ortiz is a well-recognized player here as well. And, of course, on the other side, uh, Chad Besconer, been at many events, and Jackson McDonald being one of the board of directors here at the WBCA and doing a lot of great things for the pool community. So this is a uh, kind of an expected match to see these two teams deep in the bracket, um, but also kind of fun to watch too. So be right back here. All right, going for the head-on break. Drops the ball on the side, drops another ball on the side. So he's got a stripe in and a solid in off the break and a pretty wide open rack, just leaving that cue ball all the way down table. Gonna be a little bit of a tester to get started, but not too bad. I think I kind of like the um, little combo shot here to get rolling and I think he does too.
Nice shot there on that combo to get that two down table a little bit in a pretty good spot. Uh, I think that what we're looking at here for the trouble ball or the one you have to pay attention to is that purple four ball. I think that's the only one that you really have to pay a lot of attention to where you want to be because I believe that it Sorry only that. has one pocket. Yeah. No problem. Kind of caught me just starting dinner, so. Yeah, no problem, daughter, Colin. daughter's taking over cooking it. It's just she needed a hand there for a second. Yeah, no problem. We got you back on. Welcome back, Colin. Okay, I do have... Um, are you a noise gate on my mic, so I'll just lower that. Maybe that was cutting in. All right. So I was just saying the four ball is the one to really pay attention to here because it's really got fewer options to, to go to, uh, but I don't think it's going to give them a, a lot of trouble. I think that's what they're kind of strategizing here as Jackson eyes down the table and how he wants to play this rack. He's got a couple of options here. He's looking at the seven ball to to get this going. Yeah, the four ball doesn't have to be moved, but moving it will likely open up more options for the eight ball as well. Okay. Checking to see how much angle he's got to bring that cue ball left off the three. It looks pretty tight past the 12. So our recommendation is to try using Firefox, I believe. Seeing if that, seeing if that, uh, what, so I kind of, honestly, I think like rolling forward off this too, is he going to draw back? Yeah, he's going to put a stop shot on it. So I'm wondering now if they're going to try to play this combination shot. Four into the five combo. I mean, either that or, you know, taking the three and trying to come around. But I don't think that's the best option. I think they've got to take their medicine here with this combination shot. And try to get the cue ball out of the center of that little triangle so that he's got shape. But nope, going for the three ball and try to come oh, around. around the world. Yeah, go around the world a little bit. No. Nope. Oh, oh okay. You know what? I didn't I didn't think about that, but I guess that, that ball does play by the 14. It looks to me, you know, when I draw that line, it looks pretty tight in there. Uh, but he's he might have I think he's got like a half a pocket on that four ball. So he's got to slow roll this, I believe. It's not going to be easy. Yeah, well, I guess he did have more than half a pocket. Went dead center. Camera sometimes lies to us. Okay, I'm going to... Pop out for a second here, see if I can't join you on uh, Firefox and see if that doesn't improve the audio. All right, sounds good, Colin. Thank you. Okay, we're back. Has that improved it at all? All right. The one last shot of this rack to close out this rack. To make it 1-1. One, one. Eight in the side. Chad Bisconner, here we go. 
No problem. Puts it right down and a good finish there. I believe that was a break and run. I believe that was a break and run from Jackson and Chad to tie up this rack. So making a little bit of a statement saying we're not going anywhere. We're sticking around. All right, so Molina Ortiz to break. Nice center ball break, controls the cue ball nicely with some top spin to hold it to the center of the table. Very nicely done. Gets a great spread and a couple of balls in. So let's see if we can see a return break and run from Ortiz and Olsen. And uh, Colin, do we have you back on? Not yet, okay. We're working on it. Albert Denego and John P. Table 53. Albert goes to five. Um, he goes to two. Yep, I got it. Um, and then these, we just have to have these three or four. Yeah. Yeah. Bob really taking his time here to figure out how they want to get started. I like how these two players really communicate well together. I was watching them in their previous match, and they really communicate early in the rack to decide what order they want to move things and, and get things going. And the key to scotch doubles is good communication, right? You guys, in the eight ball, you have to be on the same page and really know what the plan is with the other guy. So... I like the layout here. Well-controlled shot there from Molina. And here we go with this shot here on the seven ball. I'm not sure how he might want to play this. If he wants to come inside on the four to the three. Yeah, I think that's what he's doing. And so Molina now has the option to take the five here. Or could take the three ball. Whichever works best. I think the five is a good option because it allows you to just kind of draw, maybe draw that cue ball into, into the 15 ball there as, or 11 ball as a stopper so that then you have the, uh, the four next and be able to take, take care of that four and three and get out. So that's talking with their partner, how they want to execute this. Oh, 
No, this dude, uh, you know how somebody just shoots good all the time? This guy's proud of his man just out of his mind. Great shot, just like that, using the 15 to slow down the cue ball. And she's got her partner a nice angle on the four that's going to be generous and allow Bob to play that four with a little bit of stun. And I'm thinking that cue ball is going to be right here. Uh, I almost drew the circle in, the, in time. I like his position. And should be now, cue ball, I'm guessing, is going to be right there for the eight. If I'm guessing, that's that's where I'm putting it. She almost got inside my circle there. I was, I was pretty close. Uh, very good execution from both Molina and Bob on this run out. So we have seen back-to-back -back break and runs, one from each team. And this is going to be a dogfight. Going down to the wire, it might come down to who won the lag, which was Ortiz and Olsen. So each team has won their own break so far in these first three racks, two of them being breaking runs. Uh, after that first rack of a couple errors on each team, now we see error-free pool. Uh, I think they're ready to go. They've got the bugs worked out, obviously. I'm gonna go grab something to drink and then I can sit in. Tequila? No, just uh, go grab a soda. To... Wait, wait, wait. No tequila in it? Oh my, my microphone's off. Don't worry. You, you can... oh, I, I did some tequila earlier, but. All right, I'll go back. We're even in it. I'll come on back later. I'll be back in just a couple. All right, here we go. Rack number four. Jackson McDonald to break. Nice, good center break. But this one looks to be dry, and it is. So a dry break with a good spread. You know, and that's really the challenge on bar box eight ball. You, you have to decide, do I want to go with the head-on break or the second ball break from the side? And, I'm, you know, the, the head-on break, you have a better scatter but not as great of a chance of pocketing a ball. Um, whereas the side break from the second ball break, you have a better chance of making a ball, but you usually have to deal with some clusters to break out. Uh, so personal preference, I can't really say which one is better. Uh, for me, I am kind of go back and forth a bit. All right, so again, Molina and Bob are doing some strategy session here, talking about talking it over about what their plan is for the rack, which they executed their plan to perfection on the last one. So obviously their communication is right in sync. 15, bump the two and come forward. She wanted to come forward enough to have a shot at the 10, and I don't know that Bob's got the 10. That's what she was hoping for, but the plan B is obviously that 12 ball down here is plan B if the 10's not available. So it's good to have a backup ball in case you don't get the shape that you want, and that is the case. So Bob takes care of that plan B ball and sets up Molina on the 10. The challenge here might be, uh, what's the most challenging ball of this rack? I'm going to say the 11 because it really only has one pocket to go to.
But and that's what she's looking at is potentially setting up for that 11 right now. She's got a nice angle to come around and get shape for Bob on that 11 ball. I think she was looking to see how close it was to the six to see if that's an option. <laughs> Using the second rail, and that's going to be a bit of a challenge here. So this is the first shot that they've gotten offline in for offline on for a while. So Bob's going to have to do a little bit of work to get back into position. He's got to pocket that 14 with some inside, I believe inside, and try to get this cue ball back into this area here. Follow my line, Bob. Yeah, that was tough to do. He had to kind of load up with inside on that shot, and that makes the shot harder. So that's going to bring Mr. Chad Bisconner back to the table. To have some opportunity here. We got, we got, we got the legendary Raw Hannah over here hanging out at our booth, because he knows he knows that we're we're the we're the cool kids, we're the new cool kids on the block. He wants to hang out with us. <laughs> All right, we're having a good we're having a good time out here in Lincoln City. It's a good time. Okay, so what is what is Chad looking at here? Safety? Okay. Not sure about that one. Maybe just wanting to tie up that 11 ball a little bit, make it trouble. He also only left a shot on the 11. That's the only ball that Stripes can technically get an easy hit, a legal hit on. Uh, so, let's see what Melina Ortiz has up her sleeve right now. So, I'm not sure if that's what Chad was intentionally trying to do, but it certainly it worked as far as putting uh, Melina in a difficult position. Yeah. Okay. So she breaks that cluster up, opens up the 11 ball, and tries not to sell out too much. Not sure. I know the one's available. Not sure if the three ball is available. Looks like the three might be playable, but if not, certainly the one ball is. That easily goes right to the... Right to the corner pocket. I know that obviously Chad and Jackson are focused on the five and six down here because they have their pocket is blocked. Those balls need to find a home. See, so we got handful of people watching who's out there in the chat hit us up let us say hello so 
So it looks like he does have the three ball available. Well, let's see. Let's see how they address this five and six ball. Certainly not too difficult to get into this area here somehow to where you can play other pockets for those balls. But have to find a way to get the cue ball down there. And he might have gotten an angle on the two to get him down into that path. Little bit of extra heat there, but that works. That works. I like it. He wanted to get in there so he could get to that five and get that thing out of there. And I'm thinking on this one, I'm thinking I'm hitting, uh, I'm hitting low left on this five ball. I'm hitting low left on the five. Low left on this ball and try to get the cue ball right back into here. Maybe even pocket the 14. And that looks like what he's doing there. Just, just missed it. Just a bit outside there. That was the shot, though. That gets him out of the rack. If he makes that ball, everything else is pretty available. So an unfortunate error from... From Jackson there, it was not an easy shot to execute. And that one might cost them the rack. Did you play? Uh, just steal my chair. Yeah, just give him the chair and take my chair. All right, all right. We pulled in. We pulled in Jack Kiske off the street. We found him out there with his will. Will commentate for spare change sign, and so we've just brought him in here. Put him on the mic. How you doing, Jack? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself, Mister Nix? Doing very good. I'm in a room with 80 pool tables. How how much better could I be doing? Uh, I mean, if you were on one of them playing, you might be doing. Oh, that hurts, better, man. That hurts. That hurts. I got knocked out this morning. That, that hurts. Yeah, well, it can't hurt as bad as us getting knocked out to you. We didn't knock you out. We just put you in the B side, Jack. Well, Come on now. You did the rest of the work yourself. It, it, I, def <laughs> it deflated us enough to be able to uh, compromise the integrity of our team for the rest of the match. No, no shame in losing to us, though. No, you, you guys know. played very well. Yeah. I have my moments once in a while, but, you know, I played a good match with you guys. I played a terrible match the next time, and then I played a really good match. And it's like, so I'm Jekyll and Hyde so far. But we're still working it out. But there we go. So Molina Ortiz and Bob Olson rack up another one in the scoreboard. Get a steal right there, really, because I think Chad and, and Jackson had the, had the opportunity to really close that rack out. But just an unfortunate missed five ball from, from Jackson there. Uh, that cost them the rack. Yeah. And these teams, you know, at this level, you got an open table. If you're not out, you're going to lose the game. Oh, yeah. You know, if one shot could in, uh, you know, an elite scotch match or something can very easily be, you know, a couple of games. Uh, if you end up sacrificing your break and then they have the following break, uh, these teams are really tough. So it's very likely they can come back and break and run the next rack on you and that one missed ball cost you two games yeah yeah absolutely in fact in my scotch match we had uh con we had back-to-back -back consecutive break and runs in alternate in its alternate break how do you do that right yeah well, <laughs> well my we guess is that they fouled on the break and you did. guys took the break and had it re-racked and 
we we broke we broke and ran our break and then it was their break they popped the cue ball off the table we took that and we broke and ran again so very deflating for the other team to get broken ran on twice in, in a row in an alternate in an alternate break scenario but uh that was a fun thing to do i, I don't think i've ever uh, done that before um, but it's not it's not very common situation no that's uh kind of a unicorn scenario yeah it really is it's one of those things that uh you know maybe i'll i'll put it in my you know lifetime achievement file right yeah, I've had go con- home, write it in your journal. Yes, consecutive break and runs in an alternate break format. Yeah. Okay, so enough about me. This is about the players here. What are we doing about this nine ball sitting by the one up here? That's my question. That's that's the nine, and it is it is not happy being by the one. I can tell you that. And neither is Molina and Bob because they're stripes. Yeah, but if uh, if they take that. Uh, what is it the 11 ball in the corner pocket and can come out between the six three then that should give uh molina's partner a chance to be able to take that 10 down in the corner off the one and then get that one out of the way to be able to set him up for that nine ball to be able to go in that pocket i see what you're saying okay so off off the 11 come down in between the six three are you kind of going in this area here? No, I'm talking just roll out about a foot past the six ball oh, and then out to take, this area. take the cut down in the corner. Oh, she checked it with a little yeah, more she inside. Yeah, checked it with inside, huh? Okay. Gets her partner a little bit uh, straighter on that. Yeah, because you're right. That, that that 10 definitely goes here, but he wants to take it off the rail off the ball, right? He, yeah. He wants, he wants it going off this the little yeah, zigzag Yeah, and if you path. can hit that one pretty just thick, perfect. just like that, so it doesn't bump the nine and stay tied up. Yeah. That was a great shot. Beautiful shot for Bob Olson there, and that really opens up, opens up the door for them to really extend their lead here. They are showing, uh, other than the first rack, they're showing flawless execution. Yeah, that was, that was very well done. If uh, they take the 12 here, leave that cue ball right by the rail to leave a natural angle to just roll that nine in and float out for that 15 in the corner uh should be able to get uh shape through that gap between the four or five to be able to play that eight down in the corner if they don't want to try and get down table yeah that is the the key here is to find you know the, the right position to get to the eight Right, that's that's what you want here is that perfect position to get on the eight ball, and this is going to be pretty flat Ooh, here. Yeah, you got pretty straight in there. Ah, uh, if it's that flat, I, I'm thinking that the best option is just to draw back off this ball and take your medicine and come to the other side of the seven, because you don't want to try to get into this little window here where you know you're you're in you're, you're in between two balls. Uh, I would rather take the harder shot and a more guaranteed leave on the eight, you know. Yeah, but they could roll this in with straight top, stop about a and get six, over. eight inches short of the um, You're, you're going to be close to the there. rail, but maybe maybe cue ball right here, get, you know, get yeah, you to, that, is that what you're yep, kind of thinking? That's, that's what they're looking at right now. If they stop about six, eight inches short of that pocket, um, then that's leaves you that gap between the uh, – one and the four to be able to uh, take the longer shot on the eight where you don't have a lot of uh, yeah, you know, it's, risk there. Both of them are kind of difficult because, you know, your, your option over here get, gets your cue ball close to the rail and it's a much more longer distance versus, you know, the one where you're drawing back to this position here. It's a shorter shot, but you just have a little more cut to it. So let's see what Melina decides. She's going to your position. Yep, that That's looks perfect. Pretty good, and it's not on the rail. So, and Bob just gets right down. He says, "I don't, I don't need any time to think about it. I know what to do. I've been playing this game for years. I'll put it in the yeah. hole just like that." That's a great shot. Absolutely. Don't spend too much time thinking about it when you already know what to do. You know, there's no, there's no other ball to set up for. Just put a stop shot on it and get it in the hole. Yep, that's one of the things that I've uh, talked to quite a few people that I've helped out over the years is uh 
think long, think wrong. Usually your first instinct is the right one. Yeah. And taking your time on the shot to make sure that, you know, you're putting a good stroke and everything is fine. But a lot of times people look at a shot and then they start trying to think of what could go wrong and how to uh, avoid it and they everything. Talk themselves and they talk out themselves of right out of what their natural ability is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. It's like you want to, you want to take it serious, and you want to put some concentration into that stroke and that execution, uh, but you don't want to think about and second guess and and think about all the different scenarios and all that in your head. Uh, you just want to just, you know, rely and trust your trust your uh, ability that you've practiced and you've put in so many years of playing. You know, when you're at this level, um, you know, all of these players at this level, they. They've been playing for so many years. They know what to do. You know, if they take, they don't need to take a ton of time. It's when it's all congested that you have to really kind of figure out, okay, well, what's the best strategy? You know, which, which pawns do I want to move on this chessboard kind of thing? Yeah. The uh, table management is, you know, really where you need to spend your time. But when, you know, you've just got the shot there to take, there's no point in taking a bunch of extra time milling over it in your head just you know get up there trust your stroke and put it in the pocket like he did on that eight ball yeah what do you think about that break from jackson mcdonald powerhouse break gets a good stop on the cue ball cue ball wasn't flying around the table right he yeah. gets ball in i like it great control good stroke and uh yeah this is a very doable table right here he can either slow roll for the six take the long shot down or draw back out. Um, he's coming into the six. Ooh. That's okay. He's got the four yeah, ball there. Yeah, he's got the four. Yeah, it's no problem. Um, I would have liked to have saved the four to be able to play it in the side to get on the eight myself. Yeah. But, so uh, obviously your eight ball is going to go here, right? That's your target for the eight. So what's your key ball going to be for the eight? Well, I think it's got to be the one from here. So if you were to That's shoot the, the five or eight. the five, yeah. sorry. That's right. But, yeah, if you shoot the four, stop the cue ball there, and then you can roll the three in with just a touch of draw. But they've also obviously got a different plan than I do, but a lot of times it's a little different when you're at the table. Yeah, I always say there's multiple ways to get it done. The only wrong way is the one that doesn't work. That's it. There's only one wrong way, and that's the one that doesn't work. Absolutely. <laughs> when there, you when you easier when you ways, when you miss the shot, you say that was the one wrong way. <laughs> Every other way was fine. <laughs> Tapping the table to slow down the cue ball. <laughs> we all do that. Doesn't matter. Doesn't doesn't actually do it. But <laughs> no. But I actually watched a tournament where they had a rule in the tournament where, where you couldn't tap the yeah, table. Yeah, tapping the table. Yeah. Um, as the balls were rolling was considered a foul. Technically. Technically, I think it is, but nobody ever, it's not like, you know, a little nervous tap, you know, on the rail is not going to, you know, everybody kind of does that. That's, I, I think it's funny because we do that a little bit, you know, we just kind of like, or we tap our cue on the floor, like, come on, slow down, slow down, you know, yeah, but like, you know, to will it into place. Yeah. Now, if you get down and like start blowing on it or something to keep it away from the scratch, <laughs> that's a, definitely a foul, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> People are going to do all kinds of crazy things. Nice stun shot from Jackson gets that was in a very nice stroke. prime position, and he does like the five as his setup ball for the eight, just like you do. Yeah, that was a that was a great shot to be able to make that ball and stun over that far, hitting it that hard from that flat angle. Yeah. But uh, he made that look easy, but that's a lot harder shot than it looked. The stun shot. Yeah, yeah, to get it perfect like that. I, I agree. This is a beautiful run out here. You know, all you got to do is just stop the cue ball here or draw back about, yeah. you know, six inches if you want to. But Well, even if you drew back two feet where the cue ball is yeah, now, you're, you're still fine, right? Yeah, you've got a big margin for error yeah, here. Just, but as long as you at least stop it, anything but go forward and, you know, and potentially hook stuff. Yeah, just fine there. He actually got a little closer to the eight, which is kind of helpful. Yeah, the only way it could oh, go. Oh, look, the, I, I thought the rack was on top of the balls. They could have removed that a long time ago. I thought it was, I thought the balls were resting on top of it. 
They hadn't yeah. moved, <laughs> so yeah. nobody decided to move the rack until now. I guess it didn't matter because those balls hadn't been touched the whole time. So, yeah. Yeah, As that, long as you don't get a bad kiss uh, off of one of these balls, you should be able to draw straight into the face of that. Uh, I believe it's the 13 and be fine. Oh, nope, he oh, kissed off. No, he, did he kissed scratch. off the 13. That's what I was thinking might yeah. be a problem from there. That's the only way that could have gone bad. Yeah, you called it. That was and unfortunate. That one is going to go to Ortiz and Olsen and put them on the hill. What a swing game. What a swing shot that was. Instead of being 3-2, or instead of being 4-2, it's 5-1. A huge, huge mistake. Yeah, he's going to be kicking himself oh, for a while man. about that one. He's over there shaking his head, taking a drink of water, trying to reassess what yeah. he's doing with his life at the moment. Yeah, they got to they got to get some water and pour it over their head and cool down on, after that one. We've all been there, haven't we? Oh yeah. I mean, come on. If you're a pool player and you haven't done that and been there, you you, you haven't been playing long very long. So. Uh, so Ortiz and Olsen up five to one, and commanding the lead here. And um, I will not be uh, ashamed to say that I am half owner in their Calcutta. So not that I'm rooting for anybody specifically. I just happen to have oh, a financial sure investment into this. <laughs> so no, but I, I really like Jackson and Chad too. Like so, it's like you know. I, I'll be happy no matter who wins. I just want to see a good match, honestly. I really do. Yeah, that's the important thing is, you know, try and make it good for the people that are watching. Yeah. I just, you know, I saw them on the on the, on the the roster, and I thought, this is a good team. This is a really – they're all good teams, but I, I just really like the chemistry between these two, and Melina has impressed me so many times watching her game that I figured, well, it was probably a good investment. So I only bid on one, and – uh and I, and I won them. And they're already guaranteed at least fourth. And if they win this, they're guaranteed at least third. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. So the winner of this is going to play Joe Tamura and Kim Raymond. Ooh, that'll on, be another good match. Yep. And it's going to be on the same table. So. Yeah, I've, uh, I've come across uh, Joe Tamura more than once in my uh, tournament career and. Yep. He can definitely play. He's got a nine-foot table at home that he plays on quite a bit, and he's he's a dangerous player. Yeah, I've played Joe quite a bit because he's up in Kitsap County where I live, so I know him and Kim very well. And, uh, yeah, they, they suffered a pretty tough loss in the hot seat match, 6-1. Five, five, and, um, and a lot of those games could have went the other way, and they didn't because of just errors, right? And so... They got a couple hours to go and get their heads straight, right? And you know they're they're waiting on the winner of this one and see if they can come back and turn it around. But back to this match. Oh, a missed three ball here from Bob. That's uh, that's a rough one. Yeah, and that was the first shot off the rack, so it's still open. That was a tough opener. The way that those balls broke and the cue ball stuck to the bottom rail, and you know that's. Yeah, that's unfortunate though, because I mean, the you've got a couple of stripes that are in kind of tough spots here. So, in a situation like that, if you've got a shot at a solid, a lot of times you just got to bear down and just make sure you make that. And even if you're giving yeah. up a bit on shape, I think that's just, what he was doing on that yeah, three ball. I think he was trying to get too good a shape off of it instead of just making sure he made it because. There are a lot of times you're an 80% favorite if you get the right set of balls yep. in an eight ball rack and, and you give up that uh, position for them to be able to take those and then you're fighting from behind even harder. And Chad agrees with you and that's why he's taking a tougher shot on solids. He's going to take on this combo because he knows that he wants solids. You take solids, you got the huge advantage and he's going to gamble with the combo to get that advantage. Four five combo right here. Yeah, and if he can make that five, that four should drift up toward the corner pocket. A good shot, but he's not leaving his partner much to go with here. He's gonna have to they're oh, gonna have gonna to cut that four ball all the way down in the other corner by the looks of it. That's what it looks play like safe from here. Yeah, it's what it looks like. I think you're right. I think he's gotta go all the way down. And that's that's not an easy shot to execute. 
but yeah. these guys can do it. Jackson McDonald at the table has got the goods to get it done. It's a pressure shot. He did have a similar shot uh, earlier in this match on a five ball that he just barely missed. Yeah, and, that caught, and that cost them the rack in that one. So, Unfortunately, they just don't have a lot of good safety options. Oh, he is going safe. Unless he was playing a two-way there and calling that pocket. But not sure if he's gotten all the way as safe as he wants because there might be an opportunity to put this 13 in the side pocket here. It's not a straight-in shot, but I think it is there for... Molina Ortiz to attempt it. Yeah, that uh, seven seems to be blocking the uh, potential for the bank. So the cut in the side, I think, is the right shot here if you're going to go offensive. I think you kind of have to go offensive just because of how solids are laid out. And there's not a lot of places to hide from this position unless you can somehow get the cue ball to come off this rail and back to, you know, something, something like that. But well, even then, you know, you're, you're, you're going to sell out this four ball. Well, so. But if you were to come off of, I believe it's the 11 ball, right by the spot. Yeah. And uh, just miss that three off the end rail and come up. Oh, underneath the what four. about that? But that was a great But Molina right says, there. no, I got this, man. I got this. We're good. Yeah, she plays pretty aggressive, and she's good at it. So There's a reason she plays aggressive. Yeah, if you can make shots like that, why not? Because it wins games for her. And I've seen her play a number of times uh, in the NWPA events, uh, you know, the Northwest Women's Pool Association. And uh, on the nine-foot tables, and I've, I've seen, seen her in the Northwest Cup. Uh, she puts on some pretty good performances. She had James DeVee, uh, Hill Hill, and had a good opportunity to take down James DeVee in the Northwest Cup. Just fell a little short on that one, but it was fun to watch. She played some great defense and just a very talented player overall. Yeah, James is a very tough kid. I've known him for a lot of years. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, he's definitely a bit of a monster at times on the pool table so yes he anybody is anybody that can take him to the you know limit win or lose taken it that far against him is a yeah. good accomplishment oh she had him on the ropes no doubt about it and he he was struggling because she was playing really good defense on him waiting for her opportunities on offense and executing on offense when she could oh look at that shot Ooh, almost that was a good in. effort but, but look, look at the, look at the cue safety. ball <laughs> that's just that's just dirty that's just dirty. That's good, clean living right there. <laughs> that was filthy. But, uh, but uh, look at this. Leave here, them a here, chance yeah, to, be able to just thin he, the edge of the one and tuck yeah, right back behind it. The ticky. He's going to do the ticky. These can be kind of tough, though. It's yeah. hard to be able to control that when you're trying to hit it that soft. A hundred percent. Yeah, but when you're trying to roll the ball two inches, it's really hard. He to... hit that very well, though. Yes, he did. Yeah, I don't know if Molina was intending to do that, you know, as a safety or as a backup, a two-way shot because, but um, that's going to give ball in hand to the Bisconner McDonald team. And they're having a little conference back there, deciding how they want to approach this and get this going. Uh, well, having ball in hand here is great, but this is not an easy table to navigate with uh, where that 9, 11, and 12 are. It makes getting anything on that four ball pretty tough, but if you take it now, then uh, there's potential for you to you know, get a little flat on this three and have a hard time getting back up table for anything. Right. With well, as good as these guys are, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. Okay. Good stop shot there. Good angle to be able to come back up. 
Yeah, and the, and the six plays in the bottom right corner, so it's not as troublesome as it might appear. So there's really no trouble balls. Just got to make sure you get out of here, and I think I've my, I think my screen froze. All right, we just had a little audio issue there, but we are back. And um, looks like they're almost finished with this run out here. From the ball in hand, saving that six ball is the key ball for the eight. Yeah, would you roll this forward and play the eight in the side, or would you try and draw it back to play it down in the corner? <laughs> you know, it depends on how I'm feeling, I think, you know, because... If I'm feeling really good and I'm, I'm liking the way that the table with that, that I'm drawing the cue ball back, I'm going to draw it back. So. It looks like they're going but, low on this. But even just a stop shot, yeah, a little oh, stun, stun. A stun shot is actually the best way. That That is 100% the best way because you're not getting out of line. That cue ball is only going to roll a maximum of two inches. Yeah. You can't go wrong with that. Yeah, two inches well in any struck. direction, you're still going to have a, a you know shot. So very nice out from Chad and Jackson to get it to 2-5, and we got action. And again, you are watching the Elite Scotch Doubles in Lincoln City, Oregon for the Western BCA 8-Ball Championships. This is Patrick Nix and Jack Kiske on the microphone. We're using the Evo Sports platform that's available to have installed at bars and pool halls near you. Player run live stream system with no technology experience required. Even Jack Kiske could run a stream on this program, right, Jack? Oh, well, I mean, I'm not sure. I, uh, <laughs> I'm assuming I'd be able to figure it out, but I know the owner, so I'd always be able to call him for help. It's funny. I, I hand the players the tablet and I say, "You guys are the live streamers. Go ahead and have fun with this." You know, they say, "Well, I don't know anything about technology," and I said, "Well, here you go," and it just you know, they literally type in their name, and they their race length, and they the scoreboard pops up, and then they just hit up or down on the scoreboard. Well, I can do that, <laughs> and that's all there is to it. We mount the we mount the camera, we mount the scoreboard, we install everything in the pool hall, and players can start and stop streams whenever they'd like. Nobody needs to actually be there to actually run any kind of technology. It's all run on the back end automatically. It's automated. Yeah, that's a wonderful uh, concept, and you guys have a great deal going here. I what a break that was from Jackson! Holy cow! That was he put a little effort into that one. Yeah, yeah. No, we're we're loving this, and and the players are loving it too because you know the thing is, is we're all passionate about this game and this sport, and 
Uh, we want to share it with, you know, friends and family that may live outside the area or they just can't come to your events or whatever. And it's really cool that, you know, you're able to share your passion with, you know, your aunts and uncles or, you know, your best friend in Ohio or somebody like that. And uh, that's that's the cool thing about live streaming is just kind of allows you to share that with everybody. Oh, yeah. I know uh, when I've been on uh chalk box uh a couple times i've been over to your place to be able to play matches there my uh my nephew really enjoys being able to hang out and watch those matches and uh he has a lot of fun hanging out with my brother and they you know enjoy seeing all of the stuff that's going on and it's just cool that you guys are putting this out there where everybody's got an opportunity to be able to do that you don't have to be a touring pro to be on a tv match for people to be able to see you play right right absolutely i've heard of that chalk box thing before somebody mentioned it i, I think i've heard a couple of things about chalk. Oh, what a, a shot on the two ball Ooh, that was interesting wide, right? i was thinking that the one ball was going to be their starter there uh but taking the taking the opportunity on the long two ball as the first shot of the rack so that's going to leave an open table for Molina and Bob Olson, a wide open table to close out the set. That, so, uh, that eight ball must go in that bottom left corner pocket if they were shooting for the solids, because I was actually thinking stripes taking the uh, 13 down in the corner past the 14 would have been a good starter. Oh, it, yeah, it, it, it definitely goes by there. Okay. I'm, I'm sure of that. Yeah. So, but I, I was wondering why he wouldn't have taken the one ball there because, you know, that, that cue ball was right in this area here, you know, and he chose to took, take the long two ball. I'm not second guessing him. I know they're great players and all that, but it was a more difficult shot. And on the first shot of the rack, it's so critical that you establish your suit and not give your opponent. You miss the first shot of that after the break and you're giving your opponent a huge advantage of oh, yeah. getting to choose. Uh, so, especially with as devastating a break as they put down and as open as this table is, that, uh, that's a very critical error. Yep. A big draw shot from Molina right there. That was a great stroke. Puts her partner in perfect position to be able to roll that three in. And now he's got the shape on the one that, that uh, Jackson had a minute ago. Almost the exact same spot that Jackson was in on that one ball. And Molina's going to either take the one or the four. She's going to look at both, but no, she's she's looking at the one. And I think if you just cut this in with a little bit of top, you can catch the rail about six, eight inches above that side pocket. Yeah, but that cue ball is going to move. It's going to move more than you went want it a to. Long way. But luckily, that five is there to save the day. So Bob needs to just put a, a draw stroke and kind of kill that cue ball off the side rail so that they have a, a nice straight shot on the six get straight on the four and they're done from there right so yeah just got to get it done here on the five just a touch a right or a touch a low either one just stun it out off the rail just oh a little bit. Ooh. he uh he came up out of that one pretty aggressive mid-stroke did he? Yeah, yeah, he, he, uh, yeah, he popped up on that one a bit. That'll do it. You only need to be off by a little bit, and it makes a big difference. So giving Jackson and Chad an opportunity to get something going. They were just sitting in their chairs going, well, that was a good tournament. That was fun. Yeah, and if you they know? can come back and win this one, then that pressure starts uh, shifting direction pretty quick. It can, Absolutely. You know, after you've given up a couple of games. Well, you know what they say in pool, the two hardest games to win are the first one and the last one. Tell me about it. I know that too, big time. This is uh, this is not a gimme here. No, you taking this cut on the 13 or the combo on the 11, 10 or whatever that is? I think I'm... I think you're forced to have to go for that cut, and he which did. is unfortunate because you'd like something a little easier to get going. Yeah, and that did not work for them. 
Yeah, the combo would have been pretty brutal just because the two balls were separated by a good distance, right? To go, you know, from here to here, it's, you know, you don't have to be off by much for that to not go. Yeah, the only thing you could hope to do from there is if you were able to shoot at that combo and be able to hit it with a little bit of high left and miss the eight coming off the 11, get down to the end rail and maybe spin back up behind the 12 as kind of a backup safety. But, I mean... That's just ah, he that's got just tough. He got out of position. He wanted to be on the other side or straight, right? He got on the incorrect side of this four ball, and now Molina is going to have to come either into the eight or into the eleven with this cue ball, right? I mean, well, she may be able to just roll this in with a little bit of top and go right between the eight and the twelve and leave her partner the eight either up in the corner Ugh. or in that right hand side pocket. Uh good point, good point. And if you and if you happen to bump the twelve on the way down, you're probably still okay. Uh that's a good point. Not bad. Probably better than stunning over and bumping the eight or bumping the eleven because yeah. all kinds of funny things yeah, can I happen if you did try that. To do that because you don't want to hit a shot like that very hard because you wouldn't want to carry them off the eleven and like scratch in the side. Right. So you're hitting it easy. But if you happen to get just a little too much draw and you float right past the 11 and don't touch it you dead bury yourself well, she's putting draw on this and she got See, behind she, it she, she she wanted to bump the 11 to, yeah she wanted to hit the high side of the 11 oh my goodness and missed it now her partner's left with a really tough back cut into the side pocket yeah and uh with the way he popped up out of that uh shot on the five ball just a minute ago this is going to be one that's really going to test his nerve yeah and if you catch this a hair thick the scratch in the corner could be in play as well yeah not sure if that's this in play if the 12 is in the way or not but it could be the scratch but um i, th I think it's i think the cue ball is gonna hit the 12 oh, he looks like he's gonna bank this he did try. And the action continues, at least for a little while longer. McDonald's and Visconner just breathe a huge sigh of relief. Yes, they did. And they've uh, this is the second this is the now. second time that they've had a sigh of relief because I think Ortiz and, and Olsen should have been out twice now in this rack and have both times failed to execute to get out of the um, the open racks. Uh, so this is unusual what we've seen from them previously they're normally very sharp when it comes to the open table runouts got a little out of shape there they, they have that uh, 13 up in the corner but I think that uh, he was trying to avoid bumping into that 11 ball and roll past it and try and uh, get the lower end of the table opened up a little bit more But this should work pretty well if they just shoot the 13 and then uh, they can take, I believe it's the 10 ball by the bottom left corner and then uh, shoot that 12 ball, then shoot the 11 in the side and just roll up for shape on that 8 ball. They should be in pretty good shape from here. It's pretty much just roll it in, roll it in, roll it in. We caught that a little, little hard. Yeah. This will, this will still work, but I think he wanted about uh, six inches less rollout on that shot. He's looking at where he wants to be on the 11. Yep. I think you just slow roll this ball to the pocket, and you still, even if you come up, you know, even if you come up to here, it's still going to be okay because you're on the correct side. You're going to bring the cue ball in down here. You're going to be okay on the eight, just a little longer on the eight. Just. I'm I'm not a big fan of slow roll in this. No. At this point in the match, I think I'd try and hit to come up to mid table come up and eight. take the 11 in the corner just because yeah. you can put a better stroke on it. And when you're, you know, down toward the end of a match here yeah. and you really need to win, if you're slow rolling balls, that allows things to show up in your stroke yeah. that can be problematic. If you put a little firmer stroke on it, 
then you're not as likely to do a little twist with your stick at the last second or anything. Yeah. So I like hitting it a l with just a little more pace. I like I like what you said, and he does too. I think you're absolutely right. They played it. He played it just perfect. Jackson McDonald to get win number three. Waiting for a guy behind him to get done with his shot. Now he's got somebody on the left side of the table. Just take <laughs> yes, a, take a know, deep breath. Take your time. We got traffic jams all over the place. These tables are kind of close together. So, you know, you have to be patient and be aware of your surroundings here. And there we go. Good stroke. Jackson McDonald for the win. And That's it is 5-3. And we're going to see maybe a little bit of a, a you know, a little frustration swing going on here with the Molina and Bob had that out a couple of times and oh, yeah. fail, failed to execute, and that was the match, right? And you know when you have a chance to win the match and you don't do it, it just gives your opponent so much more confidence, and it just makes everything more difficult going forward. Oh uh, yeah. Let's they're... see if they can snap out of it. They've already put, put together a break and run earlier. If they do it here, they win the match. We'll see what they can get going here, but that's got to be a little frustrating. I know, I know how that is. Yeah, there's, they're definitely going to be a little, little hard on themselves after that one. So, good players though. They shake that stuff right off, and they get right back to work in the next rack. Oh, and it Ooh, kicks into that it. Terrible, that's a salt terrible. in the wound, right? You, you know, the, it's it's funny how the snowball effect happens, right? I mean, it's just like, you know, little things like that, and then you do, you fail to get out, and then the, you know, then you get a, a scratch on the brake, or another team breaks and runs. You know, it's like, how in the world did we, you know, let this thing slip away? So here we go, golden opportunity to sneak back into this match for. Chad and Jackson. Uh, so what do you like taking here? Okay, so I'm looking. Let me wait until Chad gets out of the way. He's such a big guy that he blocks the whole table with his, you know. Well, I, I like solids because, you know, the, the 14 and the 11 they don't really seem that easy to me, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, the, yeah. Those two balls make me want to take solids here. I would absolutely agree. And if that three ball passes the nine to that bottom left corner, then uh, you have no problems here at all. I mean, you can use the seven to get on the other side of it to shoot it to the right. But if it goes in both pockets, then that, you know, the more options you have available, the better. 100%. 100%. Yep. So he's got the choice between the four or the five here. Well, I'm thinking they're going to take the four here with just a little bit of low and some left. Yeah. Go to the left rail, the long rail, and spin back out for shape on the six in the same pocket. And if you overhit it a little, then maybe you end up with a good shot on the five. Oh, beautiful. You know, I, I like taking the four there simply because it was blocking the six, right? You just, exactly. you know, it's a, you, you've got to get that out and then you get the six, you know, and then everything is, is open, right? You don't want to be taking combos when you don't need to take combos. Exactly. Now from here, they've got a little bit of thinking to do because, uh, okay. Unless they take that seven off the eight in the side, which they could do, or do you shoot the seven now and roll up, but then you potentially end up leaving yourself a long shot on the six or the five after you uh, take the three ball if you get a little out of line on it. Nice. This is a very doable table. They just need to make sure that they take their time and be smart about every shot they take. They can't take anything for granted at this point. Yeah, they seem like they're very intentional right now in what they're doing. Uh, but the, he did get kind of flat on this three ball, if you notice. doesn't look like a lot of angle. And so that might mean that Jackson has to maybe put a little bit of a draw stroke here and come off the side rail and back out again. Well, that is possible, but he may be able to uh, 
I think he's got a little angle yeah, here. I think it, he can get to the end rail and back up to be able to okay. maybe take the two and uh, have his partner spin up, you know, off there. No, oh. I guess he was a little flatter than it looked on the screen. Yeah, and now to take the long shot on that six ball. And you don't want to take the five because you're tree topped, right? The, the five gives you better position on the on the run out, but you're tree topped, right? I mean, if that nine ball is not there, you're taking the five first. You're going five, oh, all day you're going long. five, two, six, eight, right? But because the nine's there, you have to now go six, probably six, two, five, eight. That is not the ideal pattern. Yeah, well, uh, he, I think they've got a little angle here to be able to just roll straight up to the head rail. Do you? And uh, back out. It doesn't look like an angle to me, but I could be wrong. Mm. Yeah, it looked pretty dead straight. And it was, yeah, so yeah. They're, they are going six two five eight, and it's all about position on the five. This could get out of this could get a little tricky. You don't want to take take for granted that the eight ball is a hanger because you know you still don't want to be kicking at that eight. You know. Well, and you never know what could happen. You get a little careless on this shot here. If you miss that two, it could go off the ten ball and kick across and end up knocking the eight in. That's always well, the, well yeah. I, you know, honestly, I, I, there's always I think the possibility if, that the eight could get knocked in when it's that close to a pocket. Anytime you're hitting anything with pace at, at this level, if 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 it's a missed shot at this point of the game, it's probably going to be a loss anyway. Yeah. You know, that's going to be a moot point uh, because there's just nothing available. That was a beautiful shot from Jackson McDonald to really get his partner in great shape on this five ball. Absolutely perfect. Drew it back, not too far. Good to go. Yeah, that, this has been a nerve test and rack for them. Yeah. It'll be a very good win for him. And then almost all of the pressure is back on Ortiz and Olsen because they just got uh, – Three in a row. Three games in a row. Three in a row to make it 5-4, and they get the break. So yeah. they could break and run for a hill-hill to go hill-hill. And I tell you, the, the frustration keeps mounting on Ortiz and Olsen, oh, yeah, knowing that they had, the, you know, they had a couple of our chances to close out this set. You know, and I, I know I keep going back to that because that's probably, as a player, I know I go back to that in a match when I know I, I had the chance to close it out and I didn't, and that score keeps piling up and I give up a big lead. It, it just, it's it's really extra frustrating. Oh, yeah. That's why momentum is, is huge because if you're the player that's coming back, you're like, hey, <laughs> you know, I'm free rolling now because I should have lost a long time ago and now I'm still in it and it's hill hill, you know. Yeah, and I mean, you never know what can happen when the momentum starts shifting. Then, you know, you're never out of it. I've played matches before where, you know, I was playing like a race to nine against somebody and I was down six nothing. And, you know, I got one good roll that allowed me an opportunity to start stroking the ball a little bit and I managed to come back and win the match. And, you know, a lot of times being down six in a race to nine, a lot of people, you know, kind of give up, but obviously, uh, Miss Connor and McDonald are not giving up. They're giving this everything that they've got, and uh, props to them for fighting as hard as they are. And see if they can manage to be able to get all the way back to overcome this deficit that they got put in. I'll tell you what, Jackson's got a beautiful break. That one, he did get a little bit too much draw on that cue ball to bring it back down to the, the bottom rail, but he's been breaking pretty good where he's leaving the cue close to the center and, and getting a couple balls in. Uh, dead straight head-on break is what he's using. Uh, does have the two in the side. I believe that uh, is also available, and also available is the 11 in the side. So yeah, I think thinking the 11 in the side is probably the shot if you've got it just because of where that six ball is. Right, it's all about which which suit you want to take. If you like stripes best here, you're going the 11 in the side. If you like solids, you're going two in the side. I agree with you where the six is. You want to take the, I think you want to take stripes here. I mean, I do believe the six goes past the 14 up in the top left corner pocket, but to shoot the four to get shape on that, because that's about the only ball you've got down there to be able to try and get shape on that with, unless you're going to try and break it out at some point. But I think stripes are the uh, suit that you're going to want to shoot for here. Agreed. Agreed. 
Okay, we're gonna stop sign ups again so I can get caught up. Okay, let's see. He's definitely taken a lot of time trying to make sure he knows exactly what's going to happen here. All right. So Chad now down after they've strategized here. He's looking at the 11 in the side as we predicted. Good well control struck. there. Yeah. Using the using the template rack to slow down the cue ball. <laughs> That's just good strategy. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I've I'm I've been known to uh, use the template rack if if somebody leaves it there and there's you know because there's balls that are stuck inside of it, right? So you don't want to move it because you'd have to you know make a big deal out of it. But if I'm playing a safety, uh, I know that I can get stuck to those balls inside that because it'll stick inside the magic rack, right? I've used it many times in that way. I know that's a little cheap, but hey, you know, you do what you got to do. Yeah, you got to take the wins however you can get them. Because if you slow roll a ball into the pile that's inside the, the template rack, it sticks in there and it, it you know, glues them together, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so it's kind of a, a little bonus. You think that's cheap of me to use that as a uh, strategy? I think it's a smart tactical decision. <laughs> Would you do it? Have given, you done it? Given the opportunity, <laughs> I may or may not. I cannot confirm nor deny. <laughs> okay, I like drawing back on this 9 to draw back for the 12 to get shape on the 14. I think I'd just as soon roll up for the 15. Oh, yeah, he agrees. Ah, now you take the 15 and roll down so that uh, you can take, I believe it's the 12. 12 yeah, this is the 12 down here. You yep. can cut that in, and uh, you want to get an angle where you're basically about a diamond out from where the four ball is straight across from it. Right. So you can just take that 14 up in the corner with a nice confident stroke, go to the rail and back out to center table pretty much dead between the left side pocket where the seven ball is now mm -hmm. to leave your partner a natural little cut down in the bottom right corner on the eight ball yeah i think, I think he definitely wanted to be straighter on this 15 so yeah he's, he's definitely going to have to come off this rail and try to come down to this area, I think, right? It looks like he's hitting low on this. Hmm. Oh, oh well, a little drag draw. Yeah. A little drag draw stroke. Yeah, he got Just to slow the cue ball down. That was this, beautiful. It should work fine, but I think he wanted to be about a ball higher off of that rail. This is... Yeah, but this is okay. definitely he's, angle to be able to get out, but... Uh, you just want to make sure that you get to that... longer on that shot. Then, I'm, I'm going to... Yeah, he's because he's going to be a little closer to the rail. So I'm, I'm guessing his position on the 14 is going to be inside of this circle. What do you think? I think that's a pretty good uh, judgment right there. How'd I do? How'd I do? That was incredibly <laughs> well done. If you could play shape as good as you can draw shape, I know. you'd be a 700. I would be. Can you believe? I mean. Yeah, I couldn't put it there, right? But I can draw the circle of where it should be, right? Where good players can put it, right? <laughs> he got dead center in my circle. That was, love... that was amazing. <laughs> that's as good as he could have got, right? I mean, that's from where he was, that's as good as you could have gotten. Well, I would have wanted a little more angle on this 14 just because if you try and roll this oh. in easy... You can scratch in the side pocket, as unlikely as it seems from here. You shoot that 14 with a little bit of top from that angle. You can roll up and 
get in that side pocket or even catch the tit of it right. and uh, yep. leave your opponent really tough. It's hard to... Ooh, he get, Beautiful shot. He, he got away with it. That was Cheated well the pocket done. a little bit, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. He left his and, partner really good here. And this is to close out a break and run to take it to Hill Hill. Chad McDonald to close out the break and run. Money. Ooh, <laughs> that was a little, a little bit wiped of a its feet on the way yeah, in. But... A little bit of a pucker shot there. So we got hill hill action. This thing is far from over, man. What was it? Four one at one it point. Was five to one. Five to one at one point, and they have come and back won and won four, four in straight a row racks to tie it up at hill hill. One yeah. match for the Intercontinental Galactic Championship of the Universe. <laughs> it's a fourth place match. It's not quite that serious, but, you know, hey, uh, nobody you, wants when, to get knocked out in fourth when you've come all this ways. You don't come for fourth place. You want first, and to do that, you've got to win this one. You've got to win the next one and two more after that, you know. So you've got, you've got lots of work to do. Oh, yeah, but when, you're sitting, with this here, rack. when you're sitting here hill to hill in this match, this game is the most important game that you're going to play this entire tournament. Always, right? Yep, 100%. And we see a lot of Hill Hills today because, you know, in a race to five or race to six, you know, Hill Hills are likely. You know, it just gets, it just happens a lot. Especially when you get, you know, this far into the tournament, all of these players are, you know, really good players and they're all, They've been shooting, you know, for a couple of days now. And how about another impressive break here? Yeah, how about that break from Melina Ortiz? She that just was, hammered that. That was a sledgehammer break, keeping I, control of the cue ball. Did you notice the cue ball oh, yeah. not really moving a whole lot afterwards? The balls were moving like crazy, but the cue ball was not. And that's what you want to see on a break on a bar box eight ball game. That's the break you want to have. So options here for her partner, Bob. Uh, can we see back-to-back -back break and runs like we did earlier in the set? We had rack two and rack three, each team had a, back, a break and run back-to-back, -back, and this is a potential here. If they can stay in line, all the balls are there. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, you're probably taking solids here. Because of the one ball being a pretty easy ball to get to. Well, you don't have a great starting shot on stripes. You could cut the, uh, the 13 into the side pocket or the ten, uh, 12 into the corner. Yep. But uh, everything's pretty much out there for the solids. If you take the one and just draw back a little bit, yeah, then you can take the three ball in the side and roll up leave yourself an angle to take the six in the top left corner, go to the head rail and back down for a straight in shot on the two. You can make that roll forward about a ball, ball and a half to cut the seven for the bottom right corner and stun right up into the 13 ball, leaving your partner's shape to right. be able to cut the five in the corner and just come across for your shape on the eight. I think that's exactly what they're going to do. Watch. They're going to do exactly your plan. You know what? That's why they don't allow headphones at this event. You know, you can't play with headphones because they know that Jack Kiske is going to be telling the whole roadmap of exactly how to do it from every single ball and every single position. But can you draw the circle on the, on the table and get them to land in it? No, because I can't reach the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go. Let's see what Bob Olson has in store. He's going to start with your shot first, the one. Yeah, there are a couple options here, but I like just drawing it back a little bit. Yeah. We're not going to see. Yeah, he, that's what he did. Just drew, drew it back a little bit there. That's perfect. Now all, uh, all Molina has to do is. You want the six next, the three and then the six, right? Yeah, I would be taking the six and just, you know, take that three, roll forward about a foot. So uh, I'm going to say cue ball. Right there? Do you, you like that spot? Uh, I think that's a little too flat on the six. I'd want a little more angle. So maybe here? Yeah, maybe something like that. Just You want to make sure that you uh, don't risk hooking yourself behind the 15. So you want to make sure you've got angle where you can just roll when you ah. cut the six in with 
a little bit of top, you roll dead straight up table into the head rail and dead straight back right. down. You want to have an angle to come in at the six and come straight back into exactly. this area. Exactly. Yep. I agree. I at agree. This, they're having point, a little. They're having another little conference over there. Yeah. At this point, you don't want to have to be making something happen. You just want to play as natural an angle as possible and take away any potential for a twitchy stroke or overdoing English and getting yourself in trouble. You want to keep it as simple as possible from here. Yep. That's. They're still. They're still talking it out. So. They, maybe they have a little bit of a, a different opinion of how to execute. And so they're trying to, sometimes your partner has one way of seeing it and you have another. And you, you guys have oh, yeah. to be on the exact same path, right? So you have to have an agreement that this is the, the, the direction, this is the way that we're going to do it. Uh, and that's important. So they're ironing that out right now on the sideline. And again, there's no timeouts in this. You don't have to take a timeout. It's open coaching as long as you are not doing it at the table. So you have to go away from the table, have your conversation, and then come back to the table. So here we go. They've settled on a on a roadmap. They've agreed on a master plan. Nope, maybe they haven't. They're coming back to discuss it a little bit more. <laughs> so maybe she had to go look at it. I'm bit. wondering if she's concerned about having a little too much angle on the three to get the right angle on the six. Uh, maybe she's worried like, about like drifting maybe the, up Maybe the cue ball comes up, look, over here. Yeah, yeah, that's possible. But even at that, I would think as long as you're not dead straight in, you could always hit it with a little bit of high left. So she, but she, she, yeah, got, she got, she got exactly where you were. Yep. All, all her partner has to do here is just roll the ball right into the pocket. Maybe a touch of left. Right, just to avoid... Coming into the 12, you don't want to nick that 12 ball. It can kind of change things up for you. So, oh, he's oh, going take five. The five. Okay. Take the five and draw back. They for the deviated six. from your master plan, Jack. See, I don't Oh, and look, like and he got because, it back to the same spot. Well, that's, that's a pretty sharp angle um, for, I mean, it's definitely doable, but you're having to really slow roll that six ball if you're going that way. Or just put a little more left inside English, which checks up the cue ball a little more off the rail. Yeah, but uh, from that angle, I might be tempted to hit it with just center right okay. and go around that uh, 12 uh, ball. I don't like going around the 12 because if you run into it or if you come into the nine or something, just funny things can happen trying to get around that ball. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with you on that one, Jack. If I'm allowed to do that, uh, you're allowed to disagree with me anytime you want. We all have different strategies yeah. and shots that we like. Yeah, I'm thinking and I definitely a little bit of inside. The, I definitely see it, the potential for trouble. I'm bringing it out. I'm bringing it right back out with some inside. But another conference, another conference there from. Melina and Bob to get in line. Yeah, I'm wondering if she's yeah she's gonna she's going take two the ball two and then try and get shape uh, on the seven. Yeah, that's, but that's tough seven to the from six. the seven to the six, which is why as soon as I got a shot oh, on that oh, six oh, ball, I oh, would have taken it. That was close to disaster for Melina and and Bob there. If, if she would have locked up to that eight, it would have been. A really bad situation, this, but she didn't. This seems very straight in. And if you're trying to draw back out on this, it's very easy to draw right back into the side pocket. It is very straight. I'm looking at the table, and it's dead straight. And you're right. A draw shot takes your cue ball right to the side pocket. I'm thinking his best bet here is maybe just stop the cue ball there and let Molina uh -huh. take the long cut on the six ball. Uh-huh. And... uh Agreed. I think that's your right. I think I that's mean, right. She's, she's because, a shooter. So be, I mean, because the other way you're risking the scratch or you're risking not getting shape on the six. It, the stop shot guarantees you a shot on the six. Yeah, just you, take you your guarantee. Medicine yeah, here. you're taking your medicine. You're guaranteed another shot on the six. Uh, so not the out that they wanted to do. I, I do disagree with the pattern there. I think the six would have been better earlier, uh, but. Again, at the table, they know, they can see things that we cannot see. 
He's going with the Ooh, draw. He managed to cheat it, but he didn't get out far enough to give no, his partner he a shot. He didn't. I wonder ah, if she's they got are enough frustrated. of this to try and reverse bank it back to the corner where she's the bottom left corner. Or oh, maybe she's got. Maybe she can cut that from the screen. It doesn't look like that's oh, possible. Man, that is really sharp, man. Oh, she threw her cue. She's getting so mad, she just threw her cue like a javelin. Did you see that? <laughs> Trying to take out her opponent. Do you see that? Hey, that's a strategical maneuver right there. Yeah, that's why they have carpet at these events. <laughs> Imagine how loud it would be if we were uh, had like a tile floor. Oh, if you were at uh, Ox Billiards with the concrete floor oh, and that God, happened, yeah. that, that would echo in that building for days. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's, uh, you know, a little bit frustrated here because, I mean, this wasn't a simple out, but they made it much harder. Um, yeah, that's that, that's why, you know, I would have tried to get to that six as soon as I could. I would have taken it, you know, on that third shot of this run to get it out of the way because it was the only one you're working away from the rest of the rack. She going to the cut? She cut oh, it right into the that hole. Was a great. Look shot. at that shot. Does it come out and end up with oh and she gets shape on the eight? Her partner's up on the rail, but he's got to look at it. He's got to cut in the he's side. He's got to be happy because he he's the one that left her that shot yeah, on the six. And yeah, he's you good. know, he's gotta be happy that he's back to the table at they all. Both just that was be thrilled right now. That absolutely that shot incredible. Went. That was almost a 90 degree cut. She just sliced it like it was no problem, and it didn't even cheat the pocket, it went dead center into that pocket. Melina Ortiz, ladies and gentlemen, the big, big time cut. Yeah, on a hill, hill game, that was huge. Well, I know who Patrick's going to for his next set of lessons. <laughs> oh, no, no kidding. That was an incredible shot under pressure. I'm, I'm sweating over here, and it's not just because I have their Calcutta. It's because the... <laughs> <laughs> you know, looking at it from uh, over here, I'm actually not sure if they have the shot in the side pocket. They may have to shoot that down in the corner. Yeah, they may have to. You're right. Yeah, looking at looking at the actual table, you're right. Not sure he's got it in the side. Yeah, the think, side is certainly easier if it if the ten yeah, is not in the way. I think but, it's in the way, and if you being on the rail, you pretty much got to hit this with top if you don't jack up on it. And it's that's go almost a dead scratch in the side pocket. He's calling the corner, and it drills oh, it into the pocket. He slow down cue that. ball. He knows he's got it. He pumps Man. his fist in the air with a. Big time shot on the Man, eight that ball. That was a great little what stun across there. Holy cow. Melina Ortiz and Bob Olson advance to go to the next level, which is going to be the third place match against Joe Tamura and Kim Raymond. And we're going to have that coming back for you guys in just a few minutes. So stay on the Evo Sports uh, streaming YouTube channel. This stream is going to stop, and then we're going to restart a new stream for the next match sometime in the next 10, 15 minutes. So okay, hang out, guys. Congratulations, Patrick. That's a great pick for the Calcutta. <laughs> we'll be right back. 